Just like the way Imam Sadiq is madloom today, in that his teachings are shunned. Imam Sadiq was madloom even then. Not only was his teachings shunned, but physical violence advocated against him for the principles and for the truth that he stood up for. Historians mention that Imam Sadiq, there was an attempt on his life, attempted assassinations on his life five times prior to the last time that he was poisoned. Five times they tried to poison Imam Sadiq. And one of the days, one of the nights, they come and on the order of Mansur, Dawaniki, they lit the house of Imam Sadiq on fire while he and his entire family are sleeping inside. And so you have seen, when there is a fire that comes, or a fire engulfs a building, Shaifin, what happened in Grenfell? And the fire races through the house. Ikhwani, fire is such a thing. A person who is on the 25th floor, he would rather jump down and die, rather than be burnt alive. Imam Sadiq's house was lit on fire. Imam Sadiq runs out in every he runs out and the women come running out in every direction. When the house comes down to ashes and dust, the companions the next morning they see Imam Sadiq is sitting outside his burnt house, he's crying. You think Imam Sadiq is crying for his house? Abadanlah. Inta mu'min, inta shi'i, inta ja'fari. When you hear of a house that is burning, your mind goes to Karbala. Allah. Imam Sadiq was remembering the burning of the tents on the eve of Ashura and how his auntie Zainab and how his auntie Um Kulthum and Sakina and Sukaina came running out. Allahu Akbar. And this is what Imam Sadiq said when he was asked, he said, Ya Imam, do you cry over a house that is materialistic? He says, no, I cry for my aunts in Shama Gariba. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Burning tents, the narration mentions, the narration mentions Muhammad ibn Muslim that I saw Zainab al-Kubra running into a burning tent, running out of a burning tent, into a burning tent, out of a burning tent. I said, is there something precious in the possessions that she has left behind? She is willing to get burnt in order to bring these possessions. Ikhwani, this is fire! He says, I went closer, I see Zainab al-Kubra is pulling out Imam al-Sajjar. <laughs> how many times, how many burns, first degree burns, third degree burns, did Sayyidah Zainab get while pulling out Imam al -Sajjad? <laughs> This is the tragedy and this is the dhulm on the people of Ilm and on the Ahlul Bayt. The narrations mention that the Mansur at Dawaniki was not able to withstand the presence of Imam al Sadiq. So they decided to feed him poisoned grapes when the Imam ate these grapes and he succumbed to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went into the house, one of the companions narrates Imam as Sadiq began to complain of extreme heat within his body a few hours upon eating the grapes. Imam Sadiq says, I felt as if someone is cutting the interior of my stomach with a knife. Allah, Allah. For three days the Imam rested or for three days the Imam was in his house turning towards the right and turning towards the left due to the intensity of the poison Imam al Qadim said there are times my father would faint due to the intensity of the pain and there were times that he would be awake or conscious until the 25th of Shawwal on a day like this the final day of the life of Imam al Sadiq the narrations mentioned that Imam al Sadiq gathered all his family members around him. He began to give them the wasiyah and he said to them, La yanalu shafa'ati mustakhifin as salat. He says the final wasiyah of Imam as sadiq he says to his family members that those who take salat to be lightly will not gain my shafa'ah. He then went on to bestow Imam al Qadim as the next hujjah of Allah on the earth. He gave him the aqiq and he gave him the dhul fiqar. He gave him the jami and he gave him the Quran. One of the 
companions comes in and says, I saw Imam al-Sadiq on his final days because of the intensity of his poison. It is as if his skin had all melted away. He says, I saw my Imam. I'm translating the words. He says, I saw my Imam a head that looked like it's on a pile of bones because of the intensity of the poison. Ya Imam Sadiq, wa Sadiqa. The narrations mention that on this final day, Imam lay down on the floor and he asked to be made to face towards Qibla. He looked at Imam al Qadim and gave him his final wasiyah. The narrations mention for Maddada Yadayhi wa wa Gammada Aynay. Imam al Sadiq straightened his hands and his legs. He closed his eyes for Araka Jabino. The sweat of death began to pour down the forehead of Imam al Sadiq. The Imam al Imam al Sadiq stopped breathing for Father Truho. Allah, the Ruh of Imam al Sadiq left the dunya. Imam al Qadim and the Alawiyat begin to weep in the house. The narrations mention it is with great difficulty and with tears rolling down his cheeks. Imam al Qadim gives Imam al Sadiq a ghusl. He then wraps him in a coffin and he puts on his head the Imam of Imam Zainul Abidin. Imam al Qadim goes to Jannatul Baki and buries his father. As he sat on the grave, he begins to weep for Imam al Sadiq. I say, Oh Imam, your tragedy is great, but come to Karbala. Allah, Allah, Imam al Sadiq, when you were taking your final breaths, you saw your entire family holding hands around you. But what about your grandfather, Imam al Hussein? What did Imam al Hussein? Saint she in his final moments is on the plains of Karbala. He sees Zainab al Kubra on the till. He sees Umm Kulthum. He sees Rubab holding back Sukaina. He sees Shimmer with a Khanjar coming towards him. Zainab shouting, Ya Adu Allah.